On the 25th of April 2015, a devastating earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 struck Nepal, leaving over 8,000 dead. In 2002, Barbara and I were privileged to travel in this beautiful country. We'd like to share with you now some of the images we captured and something of the atmosphere that surrounds its people. Kathmandu, sitting under the shadow of the world's highest peaks, much of the city is a far cry from the romantic 1960s hippie image. <laughs> Nevertheless, the many temples and Durba squares throughout the Kathmandu Valley remain a draw for visitors, which in turn provides a living for the local population and a training ground for the young street seller. How could you resist? Away from the tourist areas, you begin to see how life really is for many. And wandering deeper into the side streets takes you back to how life must have been in 18th century London. Although schooling is available, many choose not to go. Instead, they play a full and active part in supporting the family. Eight miles east of Kathmandu is the ancient, newer city of Bhaktapur. Bhaktapur is the best preserved ancient city in Nepal. As you can see, life is as busy here as in Kathmandu, which is fitting for a city that was the capital of Nepal until the second half of the 15th century. The vast majority of today's population are still identified as Nur, and despite its proximity to Kathmandu, Bhaktapur has its own distinct form of the Bahasa language. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Durba Square in Bhaktapur is surrounded by temples including the Natapola Temple, built in 1702, which is one of the tallest pagoda-style temples in Nepal. Or rather was, as you will see later. Nepal's reputation for offering some of the best trekking in the world is, of course, the major attraction for tourism. The five-day circular trek Barbara and I joined was in the foothills of the Annapurnas to the west of Kathmandu. When I say foothills, the foothills of 8,000 metre mountains offer quite a different challenge to the lumps and bumps that sit below Britain's highest peaks. The steep-sided valleys are inaccessible to any form of motorised transport. And once you leave the roadhead, everything has to be carried. The track is a staircase formed by manoeuvring the natural stone into position so that each step is a comfortable height. It is well maintained by the villagers, as this is the main highway back to the nearest road. As in the cities, School is available, and we frequently found smartly dressed and charming youngsters making their way to their lessons alone. Going to school. Oh, right. <laughs> Have a nice day there. The villages are so scattered, they may have to come some way each day, and they're usually unaccompanied. Everything here is done by hand from weaving to soaring planks. If it can't be sourced locally or brought in by pack horse, then it has to be carried. This is one of our trusted porters carrying some of our kit, leaving us free to enjoy the walk lightly laden. They'll be arguing over a fella. That's what it is. Each night, the porters reach the chosen campsite, well before us, prepare our meal and set up our tents. The silence of dawn and a spectacular view of Annapurna South with a fresh covering of snow 
followed by an early morning cup of tea, delivered to our tent, and full facilities provided. As our porters pack everything away, the day's plan is to cross to the other side of the valley. That entails spending the morning descending, passing on the way, farmers fertilising their narrow terraces with dung, before being ploughed in with ploughs that would have been familiar to the ancient Egyptians. Well, the thing is, you know, you've seen how narrow, look, look at some of these terraces, I mean, they're really barely a couple of feet across. As we approached the bottom of the valley, we came across a water wheel grinding grain to a fine polenta. Well, so of course, underneath drive the wheel. You can see how fast it drives it as well. And there is just a little piece of wood that touched the funnel that touches the millstone and so it makes the funnel vibrate. And so the corn goes in literally one or two at a time. And you get the very fine oh, polenta. The rural life is tough. Surviving mainly on subsistence farming, life for many means toil from a young age after lessons, if not instead of school. The next morning was our last. As our porters packed everything away for the last time, we made our way back to the roadhead, giving us time to reflect on this extraordinary landscape and the people that eke out a living here. In the light of the recent disaster, far from feeling uncomfortable in this setting, we now realise that if tourists and trekkers stop going, Nepal will lose an essential source of income and our wonderful band of porters will have no work. Thank you.